The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen. I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen. I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, Everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife unless that marriage is unlawful causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard it said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. The rather lengthy reading of the Gospel is from the Sermon on the Mount, which is a kind of summary of the things that Jesus taught. Today's subject has to do with his interpretation of the Ten Commandments. Most of us uh, learn the 
commandments. And sometimes I run into people who don't really know them very well. But they are very important. I remember one time a woman left her parish because the priest gave a sermon on the Ten Commandments. He was going through each commandment point by point. Not unlike what Jesus was doing. But she thought it was not appropriate for the church. The priest would talk about this. Another case, a woman was upset because the priest went through the commandments and she was pretty much was accusing him of giving a teaching that was somehow passe or outmoded. She thought maybe that the Second Vatican Council had thrown out the Ten Commandments. Uh, no one has the authority to throw out the Ten Commandments. I mean, not even the Pope would dare to do such a thing because. These are, uh, these are uh, based on reason and also revelation of God. God has given us these commandments in order to help us. Uh, they're not to be looked upon as somehow infringing upon our freedoms, but rather ways uh, to understand how to be free. And mind you, our religion is not all about the Ten Commandments. That, that isn't the point. But if we don't live the commandments, we can't begin to be disciples of Jesus. This is really the point. I mean, Good Jews keep the commandments. Um, unbelievers who are good citizens will keep at least the second table of the commandments, the love of neighbor. And there are many people of goodwill in the world. And Catholics who keep the Ten Commandments uh, aren't necessarily fulfilling the complete definition of what it means to be a Catholic Christian, but at least they're starting. And the commandments are fulfilled in following Jesus. We can't begin to follow them unless we keep the commandments. Commandments are something like guardrails on a road. A good driver really doesn't need a guardrail, at least not to keep his car on the road, because he knows how to keep it on the road. He's responsible. But the guardrails are there just in case. A person who is living a life such that to keep the commandments is living a life uh, such that he's not allowing himself to become enslaved to sin. Sin it, it can be a form of slavery to people. Sometimes we meet people who are uh, compelled to do things that are seriously immoral on a regular basis. We call this a vice. And people who have vices of this type are slaves. The Lord wants us to be free from such type of slavery. So we shouldn't look upon the commandments, therefore, as unreasonable restrictions. They, they really aren't. They're uh, safeguards, they're protections, they're directives for how to begin to live a life of freedom. Jesus talked about several of the commandments today, thou shalt not kill. Um, thou shalt not kill has many applications. And Jesus speaks about getting to the root of what uh, is often at the basis of doing violence to people. On any given day in our country, with, I suppose, the exception of Sunday, because the courts are closed, there are criminal trials taking place. In fact, I remember being a foreman for a criminal trial many years ago. And very often, the, the reason for the violence, although today we have gratuitous violence, which is very uh, troubling, even more troubling in some ways, but the reason for violence in many cases is because Someone has an axe to grind with someone else. So Jesus talks about what do we do with our anger. Anger is something that has to be resolved in a constructive way. 
Otherwise, it can become uh, something like a fire that gets out of hand. And for a person to begin to express his anger by condemning another person, or seeking vengeance, or hating him, these are steps that lead, or can lead, to violence. Okay, so what if the solution <coughs> Jesus gives is the solution is forgiveness? We must have the capacity to forgive people. And we can't really do that, of course, unless, as Catholic people, we practice our religion, take the sacrament, uh, we pray, we examine ourselves before God, and we use the sacrament of penance as confession to try to get to the root of our sins. Not just confessing sin, but what is behind it. <coughs> Jesus talked about the commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery, which uh, has always been an issue because of the weakness of human nature. This commandment pertains to all areas of purity. Society, of course, is, is a wash in impurity of all types. Um, one of the biggest or the most lucrative industries today in the world is the pornography industry. We also have sex trafficking, and there are so many things. Um, certainly, the wide uh, acceptance of contraception has brought about in many people's minds the divorce of sexuality from its rightful context, which is the union of a husband and a wife, uh, and not only their bond, but their capacity to be um, progenitors of life. Jesus speaks then about this commandment as protective, protective of marriage. Marriage must be protected. And our world today has gotten to the point of uh, its perversion that uh, who would have imagined years ago the president of France and other high-ranking officials in the world trying to Pose a redefinition of marriage, which of course uh, no human authority has has any prerogative of this type. It's, it's arrogance to the nth degree. Take something God has made to remake it according to popular fads and fashions of the time. There are many victims of the sexual revolution. The sexual revolution. Is a, is a false, uh, based on a false promise uh, that gratification is what people need and that this is, will be good for the world. The result has been sheer chaos. 56 million uh, children have perished through abortion. The parents of most of these children are not married or at least not married to each other. We, we must protect marriage. We must teach our young people the beauty, the dignity, the holiness of, of marriage, real marriage, as God intended it. Today there are many people who are living in sexual, sexual habitation arrangements who are not married. This is wrong. We, we can't support that. We have to lead people in the right direction. Or else people will become victimized by casualties of all of the ugliness that the so-called sexual revolution <coughs> brings about. The sexual revolution has done nothing for families. It's done nothing for people's physical health, mental health, for the health of society. It hasn't worked. And any person of uh, basic intelligence would have understood that uh, even before it, it happened. Um, but what happens when enough people don't listen to the truth, we have what we have today. Jesus said at one point, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Very important for people to live lives of truth. Morality is really living truth. It's not simply following rules. It's living according to the truth. Truth that God himself urges us uh, to live in fact, Jesus even said, whoever is committed to the truth hears my voice. So 
One of the reasons for the great lack of faith today among so many people is many people are not committed to the truth. And one reason for it is that many people have allowed themselves to be compromised in different ways morally, so they're not open to the truth. And this is a very sad thing. It's almost to say that they're not really free to take in the truth of the Word of God. And Jesus speaks also about the commandment concerning telling the truth, let your yes mean yes and your no mean no. Today, uh, we live in a world where there's a great deal of dissembling, dishonesty, the use of speech to fool people, deceive people. Imagine a world where people told the truth. We could, we could then believe everything we read in the newspapers when people were giving their announcements about running for office. We could believe them because we would understand that they would be telling the truth. The list goes on and on. Truth is extremely important. Jesus said, for people of truth, we shouldn't have to, to demonstrate that by saying, I swear to God I'm telling the truth. No, people would recognize us as being trustworthy. There are certain occasions when oaths are called for, such as in, in courtrooms. Normally, person's word should be sufficient. And uh, human relations or interrelations will, will only uh, be enhanced to the effect that people live the truth, tell the truth, accept the truth. These are the things the Lord is providing for us today. And we should be grateful for these things. That the Lord loved us so much that He's telling us how we need to live. The longest psalm in the Bible is 119. You can read this at home. Uh, this was the responsorial psalm. I mean, it's just a part of it. But it's all about uh, uh, people coming before God and uh, expressing thanks for His precepts and His commandments. It might seem strange to a society that tends to shy away from this type of thing, but the biblical people never looked at it that, at it that way. They looked at it as God being concerned for us wanting to guide us, because we need to be guided. The devil wants us to go in, in, a, in a wrong direction, of course. This is why Jesus spoke about the fires of Gehenna. The true God wants us to come uns unscathed at the end of this life, enter into a new life that I have not seen or his ear heard, nor has it gone in the heart of man what God has in store for him. It's very important for us follow the Lord, follow Jesus, follow his teachings with confidence and conviction. Not pay attention to people or fads or fashions that attempt to lead us astray. If we have everything to gain, which is the Lord and his, his eternal rest and everything to lose if we don't live the way we should live.